Hi. Um, I'm doing a whistle video today, a shepherd's whistle, and I'm going to do this in two parts. In the first part today, I'm going to discuss the whys and the hows, and then in our next video, I'll we'll be actually teaching a dog uh, how to respond to the whistles. Um, so today, first why. Why do you use whistles? Why would you want to? Um, there's two main reasons uh, for me. Anyway, um, the most important one is that sound travels way better with a whistle. There's a lot of times where I send my dog Jay out uh, for cows um, at least a quarter of a mile, three or four hundred yards, I guess. Um, and the distance, I can't yell that loud if I need to tell them what to do. And so the whistles travel through uh, distance. And also they travel through wind and rain, um, the sounds. Um, so that's a really good reason. Uh, number two, there's no emotion in a whistle. So if you're stressed or you're nervous or you're angry, you know, the cows aren't cooperating and, and your dog's not cooperating. And so you get uh, tense and, and um, kind of angry. Um, so your commands have a tendency to get angry and um, the dog reads that emotion. Um, so it's better to use whistles um, because there is no emotion in a whistle. A whistle is just a whistle, it's consistent and it just means one thing. Each command means one thing and, and there's no other way of taking it. And um, So that's a good reason for whistles. Um, Anyway, uh, also I think uh, the dogs respond better to it than they do the vocal commands. They respond quicker. So how do you get a sound out of a whistle? Now there's a lot of different ones. Um, I used to have dozens of them, but I've given them all away to my family and friends. Um, this is an inexpensive plastic one. It's a shepherd's whistle. I think this one might be a Montana whistle. Uh, you can Google it or find it on Amazon. Uh, you could go to Border Collies in Action and uh, find the whistles. And so the whistle has a full. I don't think it really matters whether this little short piece here is up in your mouth or down. Um, I kind of like it down myself, um, but everybody's different. And then you've got this hole in the middle. That's where you're air is going to go through to make that whistle sound. Um, so this is a, a plastic one. There's a lot of different metal ones. Uh, the, ones the last one metal one I have left, and it's the one I use the most, is this brass one. Uh, don't get a brass one. It tastes terrible. Um, but they have some stainless steel ones that are really nice. And But I do like this one. I get a better sound out of it. Um, and the same deal. It's a fold over, doesn't matter whether um, this part is up or down. I think you can still get sound out of it. It'll just be your personal preference. Uh, the biggest question I get is how do you even make a sound out of it? It's really, it's really difficult and it's going to take you a lot of practice to get your first sound out of it. Um, so what you would do they say to put the end of your tongue on this curve right here. So like that, if you can see that. And then um, put it in your mouth and your lips. So I put mine upside down like that. Um, your lips are gonna seal, I'm sorry, your lips are gonna seal around this area. So um, they're just gonna seal around there. And your teeth are not touching the whistle. I only know one person who actually bites it and does their whistle, but um, you shouldn't be having your teeth on the whistle. So yeah, you put it in like that. And then, um, now I, everybody puts their tongue on the end right here on this curved part. I don't do that. I do mine different. And um, I put it a little further up on my tongue and then I pull my tongue back and it's just resting on my tongue. And I relax my tongue 
and then you're going to guide the air right through that hole and my tongue is relaxed my mouth is relaxed my lips are sealing the bottom part below here um, just practice and don't try to force the air just relax and and just um gently blow the air through this hole and until you get a sound out of it just try and try it's hard but once you get a sound out of it and you happen to get a sound take the whistle out of your mouth put it back in your mouth and try it again and that way i don't know you might be building your muscle memory um and it'll and then pretty soon it'll just be natural to you and then once you do get the sounds out of it um what i did i i learned decades ago but um once you get sounds out of it uh when i would go to town because i'm a country person we live really far from town um i just whistle away i whistle tunes and whistle songs and twinkle twinkle little star or uh, any kind of song you can think of um chantelle my uh friend who who uh, does these videos with me she um plays a game with her daughter and and she'll whistle a song because she's just learning herself right now she'll whistle a song and have her uh, six-year-old daughter guesses the tune so that kind of makes it fun when you have little kids and you can't be by yourself whistling uh, the songs, it's kind of annoying, but when I would um, drive to town, I'd just whistle away all the way to town and all the way home from town, and that's how I learned. Um, practice makes perfect, I always say that. Um, so when would you start your dog on the whistle commands? So I start my pops in the round pin, and I get I teach them the vocal commands and the hand signals. And once they're real confident on vocal commands um, and they're working really nice for you and you graduate the round pin, that's when I start introducing whistles. Um, so they're real comfortable with their vocal commands and their hand signals, start the whistles. So what you would do is you would tell them the vocal command and give out your hand signal, get them going like a kumbai. And then you, you say, come by, and then you whistle, you come by uh, command. And, um, and you just do that. You just uh, whistle what they're doing. Just the same as when you taught them the vocal commands. You, you got them going in a circle in a, in a direction, and you just told them what they were doing. Come by, come by. Well, now you're going to say, come by, and then, you're, and then you do your whistle. Um, and that's when I when I start them. So they're well on their way. They're at least a year, year and a half old when I, before I start with the vocal commands. That's saying that you started them as a little puppy and you've been working regular with them. Um, so Chantel uh, is going to be starting her dog Jack on whistle commands. And now in her case, her number one reason why she's going to start him on whistles is she likes to go to dog trials and the first day they do really great i mean they just smoke it they do really good on those on the, the cows and the sheep and uh the second day on their second trial uh they they both get nervous so she gets nervous because she she has um to live up to the good run that she had the day before or she wants to try. She starts trying too hard is what happens and she gets nervous. The dog reads that. So the dog gets nervous. So he stops listening to her and uh, he gets a little wild out there and then, and then they kind of blow their second day trial. Um, so, so she figured maybe she should start him on whistles and that way there won't be any emotion involved uh, in the dog trials and, and he'll work better for her. So we're going to try that. It's an experiment. We'll let you know how it goes. Uh, so the next uh, video we do, we'll be starting Jack on whistles. I've got to uh, get my J pup on whistles too. Um, if you've been watching our videos, there's two white dogs and they look identical. There's my J 
and there's Chantel's Jack, and Jack is Jay's father, and they just look identical. So Jay is short for JJ, Jack Jr. Um, anyway, uh, let's, uh, I'll give you a set of commands that I use. I'm teaching um, Chantel a, a, a slightly different set, but here's uh, the one I've been doing for years. So there, there's when you the you want him to turn into the sheep. So that's um. I think I'm gonna use my my brass one. That's there. There, and then walk up. You want him to walk up to the sheep, and then stop. Now I do a short whistle like that, short abrupt whistle, my dog drops. Um, most people I know go like this. That's their stop, but mine's just a short one. There's no set rule in, written in stone of what command, um, the sounds you want, sounds of the commands uh, to do. So you can do your own, do, do mine, do somebody else's, there's a lot of different commands that people use, and sometimes you have multiple dogs and you want to do different ones for the different dogs. So um, here's a come by. And here's a way. Um, look back. Um, could be look back or get back or bring them. Um, And then a recall, or that'll do come, when you want to call the dog off the livestock and um, have them come to you. Uh, let me do that again. So that's in two parts. If it's just a little short, come here, you know you're right, real close. And, but if he's out far and um, I need to really call him off, Um, you can have different intensities in your uh, whistles um, if you want to speed them up or um, mainly if you want to speed them up, hurry them up. Like a walk up. That's a walk up. That's hurry up, walk up fast. <laughs> um, and, and your combines, you can elongate them to get them to go all the way around, or you can shorten them up to get them um, to go part way. But I just do the same. So combine. And then uh, when, they get, when you get them, they're going on a combine way, and you get them to where you want, then you would go there. So I'll go combine and then there. Um, anyway, that's, um, uh, that's the commands. I'll just do them one more time and then, uh, we'll call it for a day. So there, walk up, um, stop or hold or down or, uh, come by, away. Uh, look back or get back and that'll do come or recall. Um, there is another one. Um, it's kind of like an emergency siren and that means bite them or push and that's um, uh, that's what I do to push them or bite them, get them going. Turn them around. Uh, so that's all I have for today. I hope this is helpful. Uh, so the next video, right now we're snowed in. So I was going to do this all in one video, um, do this little presentation, and then uh, have Chantel start on Jack. We were supposed to do it today, but we got another snowstorm, and it's supposed to snow for the next five days. So uh, as soon as it's not too dangerous to work the livestock and the dog's not too slippery, um, then I'll make another video of us actually working on the dog. So keep an eye out for it. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.